The pastéis de Belém, the Portuguese egg tarts, I found them really rich. Yes, it's extremely creamy and extremely rich. The crust is really crunchy. That was out of control, the number of layers. From the bottom, it looked like a rose because you could see all the layers. Legend has it that a bunch of monks had a lot of eggs and they needed the egg whites for making soap or some household product. And they ended up with a bunch of yolks and they didn't know what to do with those yolks. So they invented pastiche. I think what's surprising is that you really made a scene. The pastiche de Belém, they're just one character within the scene. They were right in front of me. It felt unfair to do a zoom up of the pastiche when there was a really emerald green water bottle and the box the pastiche came in is so beautiful and well crafted and well designed. And also this glass of orange juice because you can't just eat pastiche and not have a drink, right? So there are different ways of interpreting this scene. And the way I interpreted it was just to draw the objects around the pastiche. Yeah, but you know what's funny is that we both wanted to draw the squished egg tart. Like, why is the squished egg tart more fun than one that's nice? When you have two egg tarts that are the same, it really doesn't have much of an effect. But if you have one that's intact and one that's bitten into and gooey and melting and coming out, right? That's so much more memorable. I think it's just about contrast. Like People say to me, oh, I want to make this egg tart look really soft and creamy. I'm like, okay, we'll put a brick next to it. That'll make it look extra soft and creamy. It's just about contrast. People don't like to paint on site because they're just worried they will not have enough time to 100% finish. There is this sense of control people wish they had over their artwork. You have to relinquish that desire for control sometimes because when you paint in plein air, you never know what will happen. Maybe it will suddenly start to rain or something will happen that will disrupt your process and you're just gonna have to accept it. So you have to go into plein air drawing and think something might happen and I probably won't finish. You kind of have to stop because circumstances will not allow you to finish. It's the experience of being in the space that is priceless. Why these markers? They're so convenient. <laughs> I just carry a fistful wherever I go. What I like about them, I don't get to choose my colors. I get what I picked out randomly. It's sort of like pulling a name from a hat. It also makes me really consider the color now. Because if you notice the Bastaish box, the decorations are navy blue. Well, I had a dark blue, but using that dark blue would have made it really dark and therefore pushed the box more to the foreground. And so instead of using the dark blue, I just opted for the light blue. In this case, it's sort of picking and choosing color and value. Even if it doesn't match the local color, I want it to match the scene. Every time you introduce a new color, you would put it a little bit in each object, like this lime green color. There was no lime green on your plate. You made sure that you distributed it evenly. And I think the problem with color that people sometimes have is they isolate that color and it just feels like a sore thumb and it doesn't fit. I agree. I think if I had isolated the lime green, it would have felt more green. But since I put it everywhere, it is talking about the setting because the reason I use this green is for its value, not for its color. So if you turn this black and white, you'll see that the green will actually be a very light gray because that is the value of that color. But oddly enough, just to contradict ourselves, <laughs> I like that the orange is only in the glass. It doesn't show up anywhere else. Right. But what you didn't notice, Clara, is the orange is in the pastiche. Oh, yeah. Duh. Yeah. But, but it's more notable in the orange juice because it is just a spot color. I didn't mix it with any of the other colors. So you see how when colors mix together and are next to each other, interact, you notice them differently. How do you go about articulating the text without making it something that people have to read right away? I try to treat it like an abstract object. So I'm not actually trying to write the words, I'm trying to draw them. So if you look at the naturis, <laughs> I didn't fully draw the N, and I don't fully connect my lines. If you look at de Belém on the box, you can hardly read the de part. Because if you squinted your eyes and looked at it, it would have just been a blotch anyway, so I just drew what I saw. I drew a blotch. 